prayed for her. And uh, I said, out of all the viruses, I'd hate to get it would be the stomach. Uh, 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 yes. Okay. She's doing good. She seems to be doing real good. Oh my goodness, yes. She's <laughs> not sure. <laughs> there's a lot going around, but that's okay. The Lord will touch her. Yes, indeed. Are you going to put it right inside the double doors? Sorry. I'm going to just wait until you finish your conversation. I'm, I'm sorry. He's the one that usually keeps me straight, and you're taking him. <laughs> God bless you. Oh, it's good to be here today. And it, you know, I, I, I love church. I do. I, I love to be in church. I love to praise the Lord and be with God's people. What's that old song say? It's wonderful when we get together with God's people. There's just more of a that closeness, you know, and I, you find out that through the years that they become as close as family. Yeah. And since I know some of you, like you, Sister Phyllis and Sister Liz, and I don't know your name, I know you're related to Becky. <laughs> yeah. Sister Jones and the other lady back here, you feel like family, and that's the way it should be with God's people, you know, that uh, we're saved, we're in the family of God, and we can come and talk together talk and, and pray and sing about the Lord. And Thursday night is absolutely beautiful. This past, I, the first Thursday night I got to come. But I enjoyed that so much, I've been up ever since. Oh, I'll tell you, God yeah. God yeah. was here. I don't know. Yeah, absolutely. I'll begin to speak in tongues here. I felt the rest presence of the Lord fall. It was just like he was edifying us. He was building us up. And I was like you. I'm going on it ever since, you know. And I believe God wants to be here every, every service. I don't know why. I guess maybe we wouldn't appreciate it, you know. Yeah. Sometimes when you get used to something, you don't appreciate it like you should. But I know that God's wanting to pour out His Spirit in these last days and to see those young people, the new ones that are coming in, God's yeah. sending in. And I know they felt it too. So praise God. We just have to pray, continue to seek the Lord. And it's His house. We want His way. We want to be in His plan. God's going to move here. I just feel it in my heart. Sometimes I just get an assurance in my heart that God's going to do a mighty, mighty work here. And numbers has nothing to do with it. Getting in the unity of the Spirit and letting God work the work that He wants to do, and that's all I want. I said, Lord, Your will. I want Your will. I ask Him what my part to play in this last day, this last move of God, and I believe it will be. I believe it's going to be something spectacular. For anyone who's waiting and looking for the return of the Lord, this world is going to know that he's God. I mean, we have a lot of things that Satan's doing today to try to hinder, to try to stop. But to me, it's just like, um, you know, in the book of Acts. You know, everywhere they went, there was opposition. Everywhere the disciples went. But it didn't stop them. When God gets into it and God decides it's time to move, and there's no man that can stop it. And I'm excited about it. So um, we'll go to the Lord in prayer. Sister Liz, open us up to this morning with prayer. Would you please? Father, in Jesus' name, as I come before you, Lord, this morning, thanking and praising you, Lord, that we're able, Father, to be in thy house, Lord, yes, this morning. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for what you are going to do, Father, this yes, morning. Lord. And, yes. Father, we pray, Lord, that you would just open our ears, Father, that we can hear and do your precious will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I said I would shun to him behind, Lord. This is your house, your way, oh God, Lord. We just worship you this morning, Lord. We invite your presence, your power, your glory, Father, to fill this house today, Lord, to minister to each and every heart, Lord, building us up in the faith, oh God, in who we are, your Lord, our identity, oh God, in you today, Lord. Father, we thank you and we praise you for it. We glorify your holy name, Lord. We want to be that light, Lord. We want to be that witness, Lord. And we thank you, Father, that you're going to use us in this day, Lord. 
You told us to occupy till you come, Lord. And when we see earthquakes and famines and, and floods, Lord, to look up, look up. Our redemption is drawing nigh, Lord. And we're looking for you, Lord. And the beauty of holiness, Lord, as you come back, Lord, for your church, for that bride, Lord, that you washed by your own blood. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I just prayed this week. Uh, Chile called me yesterday. And I feel like we're going to go to the book of Second Peter. I don't know where we'll go after that. Sometimes he seems to lead me all over the place, but that's all right. I really pray and seek his face and his will about what? to speak because it's the anointing. It's a presence and the power of God. It's that anointing that uh, God gave me when he called me. I'm nothing by myself. I can do absolutely nothing, but I'm learning through the years to lean on God. Amen. The old psalm says, I'm learning to lean. So I'm learning to lean, and when I study or I look into the scriptures, I'd say, Lord, you enlighten me by your Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit is going to lead you in one place, and that's into all truth. And there is a complete, total truth. I'm not so sure we'll understand it or know it all on this side of going home, but I get excited about it. I, I don't know. From the time I got the baptism in the Holy Ghost, I get excited about God. You can't get me excited about anything but God. I'm like those, and I, I wonder how they can go to a ball game and scream and shout, but when I'm praising God, I dance, I sing, and I shout sometimes. And that's what makes me happy, is praising the Lord. So I'm going to start reading in the second epistle of Peter. I'm sorry about the second epistle of Peter. And I'm going to start at the first verse. And it says, Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. According as his divine power hath given us unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue whereby are given unto us exceedingly great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption as is in the world through lust. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness and to godliness, brother, kind, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charities. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. So that's what we're going to talk about today. God wants some things to be abounding in our life. God came to give us life. He said, life that more abundant. He came to seek and save that which was lost. And to me, that means going back to the Garden of Eden. What was lost in the God Garden of Eden was so precious. And that was the access man had to the loving Heavenly Father. When he came into the garden that day and he called out to him, it talks about him calling out to us. I... I, I kind of think about that every time I see that God calls. God came calling to them because sin had separated them. Man didn't make the step towards God. God made the step towards them. And he came walking in the cool of the evening and he says, Adam, where art thou? God knew right where Adam was. God knows everything. He knew exactly where they were. He was wanting them to confess. And instead, we see what they did was they began to blame. And that happens with a lot of people today. Instead of confessing our sins, going to God, asking him to forgive us, you know, well, this happened to me when I was seven, or this person hurt me here, or that happened. But, you know, God was wanting a confession. And I wonder what would have happened had they given a confession instead of a blame, you know? I wonder what would happen to a lot of people. God has called us to glory and to virtue, to that relationship back with him. The only way to have glory is to have God in your life. 
to have that Holy Spirit dictating the moves in our lives and what we say. I remember reading a book, and the man's name, it was a pastor. It was a fictional book, and I usually don't like to read a fictional book. I like to read, uh, you know, true things. But this pastor had written a book called uh, What Would Jesus Do? His name was Sheldon. I got so engrossed in it because he took members of his church and he told them for so long a time he didn't want them to do anything unless they first asked, what would Jesus do in this situation? And I actually thought about that as each one changed everything. The one had a beautiful voice and she could sing and she'd always been opening doors at these big places and all of a sudden she felt led to go down to the little uh, place where they had, you know, like missions and helps. And she found she had more fulfillment doing that than she did singing in the other places. One was an editor of a paper and he was finding that things that he would normally put in his paper he couldn't put there anymore because he didn't think that it would be uplifting to God. And it makes me wonder, when we're called to glory and to virtue, how would that change our life? If we really thought about that every day. We're called, as we studied, about glorifying God. And Jesus told the disciples, you know, if you bear much fruit, you're going to bring glory to God. How would that change? And I think I contemplated a lot in my life, what would I do? Or I ask God, what can I do today that would glorify you? And I think God's wanting to move. And you know, that brings you joy. It fulfills your joy. And it don't have to be something big. A telephone call to someone you know who's shut in. A prayer for somebody, a card to somebody. And I found that doing that brought me joy. It still brings me joy, no matter what it is. I was talking to a lady just the other day. She stopped by my house and she said, I've got a floater in my eye and I'd been telling her about the Lord. And she said, would you pray for me? Well, I prayed and the Holy Ghost fell. And this was a dear Catholic lady, you know. <laughs> I said, I've been baptized in the Holy Ghost. You want me to tell you about that? <laughs> so she called me the next day and she said, Connie, my floater's gone. I could see God sowing some seeds, you know. And when God begins that work, look out, because it's going to come forth. Amen? Amen? Amen. I know when I got to where I watch God move. If you're praying over something, first and foremost, when you're praying over a healing or even doing something for God, the next thing will be a blockage there. The enemy don't like that. He don't want you to bring glory to God. He's going to try his best, and he'll try lies. He'll come to your mind and say, well, did God really say that? Isn't that what the devil said to Eve? Well, did God tell you could eat of all the trees in the garden? All of them. The one tree. Knowledge of good and evil. We can't eat of it lest we die. Oh, you're not going to die. Oh, he's so, I see so much of it today. When you listen to people in the world talk and what's going on in their world, you know, there's so many lies that after a while, I don't even know if they know what the truth is. You can see the enemy working, but even in the book of Acts, when the enemy was determined to stop the preaching on Jesus Christ, and it's still going strong today, amen, because God, God is doing it. The only thing we have to do is to get in line with God. So with all of that, I want to go back. The first verse says, Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. We've obtained something. That's in 2 Peter, Rob, in the first verse. We've obtained something. We couldn't get it any other way. It's God-given. He obtained it. He was an um, apostle. Apostle was one who was an eyewitness to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And all of them had witnessed that. And Peter was the one that preached the first sermon. On the day of Pentecost, 3,000 souls were saved. I mean, you're talking about someone that was going to obtain witness of the Christ. It was Peter. Peter was always the first one. Sometimes he got a little ahead of himself. Sometimes we do. But that didn't matter to God. He has a way of coming into our heart, coming into our life. I look back over my life, and it I'm a miracle. 
I'm an amazing miracle. I see how he moved in situations and did things and led me to things that I didn't even know he was leading me, to be honest with you. But it all helped me to grow, and that's what Peter's talking about here. He wants us to go on into perfection. He doesn't want us, there's no stopping point with God until we get to the other side, and then I believe we're going to be surprised at the things he has for us to do. He said, if you be faithful over a few things, I'm going to make you ruler over many. Are we being faithful over a few things down here? And it is a few things, you know. If you're called to sing, do you sing? If you're called to Sister Phyllis, pray for people that aren't here, that you feel like the Lord would have here, and those little empty seats, pray for them. I find that they come to mind. If you get into communion with God, I see Sister Liz shaking her head. You'll just start praying as God brings people to your heart and to your mind because he wants them to go on. Go on into perfection, you know? Lay aside. Uh, I know uh, Pastor Mike was preaching on Thursday night. Lay aside every weight and every sin that does beset us and let us run with patience. We're in a race, and we haven't reached the finish line yet. Amen? I want to get in this race. And he tells us to run it with patience. Well, let me tell you. If you're like me, I never had a lot of patience. I didn't. I always thought my mama taught me it should have been done two days ago, and you get to it. So <laughs> she didn't even like to see me read. If I was reading a book, she'd take it out of my hand and put a broom in my hand. She wanted to see me moving, amen? <laughs> that was the way they grew up. And there wasn't anything wrong with it, you know? There really, really wasn't. It was good for us kids to find out that we needed to move. We needed to do things. I mean, you talk about today, they'll get those little telephones or tablets or whatever, and they sit there. <laughs> and a lot of things, I'm sure, on there, they don't need to be looking at, amen? But you know, if they get out, we didn't have a lot of toys and stuff, but we could come up with a ball and a bat. And we'd get out there in the cow field and we'd play baseball after we had our work all done. That was fun, you know, the neighbors. I couldn't hit a ball. I'd get up at bat. They should have done this to me. They'd say, outie, 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 outie. <laughs> you know what those words did to me? I was struck out every time. I never did hit that ball. <laughs> and I was thinking of that this week because... What does God do to us? He encourages. He wants us to be all that we can be and should be in Him. He's given us this gift of eternal life in us, the Holy Spirit. I thought of that this week, how it will prompt us to go on. And it will encourage us. And then in, Peter was talking here about like precious faith. And I thought of how precious that faith is. Amen? I may be going through a tremendous trial. I may be drugged down. I mean, the enemy's there every day speaking to me, and I'm not fighting that good fight of faith, but I can have a brother or sister in Christ who can pray for me and hold me up before God. That's what the body of Christ does, amen? It's there to encourage us on, to keep us going. At this point in time in Peter's life, he, was, he knew the Lord had told him that his departure was at hand. And what was he concerned with? He was concerned with the body of Christ going on, keeping up. Brother Paul used to say, keep on keeping on. That's what you got to do, you know? Amen. No matter what block the devil tries to put in us, no matter what block that devil tries to put in your path on Sunday mornings when he's trying to tell you, can't make it to the house of God today, you know? Look at you. You feel awful. Well, if you don't go... Then when church time starts, you're back home thinking, I'm feeling fine today, you know. <laughs> I've done that. I've done that. And my Christian walk with the Lord, all of a sudden, the ache, the pain, whatever it is, keep on keeping on. Part of the body and every part of the body is needful. We were always taught if you're sick, and I don't mean throwing up and all that, if you're just sick and you've got a problem, you belong in church in that prayer line. Brother, uh, Paul always taught us that. That is where you belong. And I yep. don't mean if you're deathly sick and throwing up and stuff. I mean if you've got aches and pain. Get to the house of God. Let the saints pray for you. You go home feeling fine. Yeah. I, always, I always could come in feeling awful lousy. And I could sit in this seat right here. 
and it seems like, hey, all the cares were gone. Yeah. And it still does. It, that's a good thing. That's indeed. You know, there were times in my life, and we used to have revivals that would last two weeks at a time, and I was working. Oh my gosh, I'm kind to go to church. I'm so tired. I'm so weak. Not feeling good. You need some rest. You've been going for five nights now. But you know what? When I got to church and the anointing of God and the power of God started moving, it left. And I was doing my little dance, and I was shouting, and I was praising God before it was over with. This is what Peter was trying to encourage the church here to do. I think I could feel a tenderness in his voice as he spoke these words, you know. As he said, like precious faith. How precious. How sometimes we just read that word, and we don't realize how precious it is to us. We're taking it into our heart. And the Holy Spirit will then begin to still that at a later, stir it up and still it in us at a later time. And it's so beautiful. Everything God does is so perfect. Everything in my life, the trials, the tears, it's all been for good. He is just a loving Heavenly Father. And all good and perfect gifts comes from Him, James says. And there's no variableness or even a shadow of turning. God never turns away from us, amen? Because if he could have turned away from somebody, it would have probably been me. He never did. The times as a Christian when I fell down and I was wallowing with the pigs, it says a dog will return to its vomit and a sow will return to its wally, wallowing in the mire. And the devil says, well, you can forget it. You blew it this time. You blew it this time, girl. He'll have nothing to do. Oh, Salva, somebody. Then that love. That love of God came reaching out to me. I am who I am today and what I am because of the love of Almighty God. And I thank him every day for that. I thank him because I can look at the corruption and everything that's in the world to know that he saved me from it. Yes. That's enough. Yes. It's enough to praise him for it. Amen. Yes. If he didn't do anything else, he's promised me heaven and he's promised me all these good things in my life. But if he didn't do anything else, save me from my sins. I mean, we could be shouting all day just because of that. He who knew no sin, no sin became sin, that I could be standing in the righteousness of Almighty God. And it doesn't stop there. He wants us to keep on going. There's so much more. There's so much more in that word that the Holy Spirit can show us, you know, because he has called us. He's called us to that glory and virtue. Virtue is moral excellence. Do we need some moral excellence being seen in the world today? Oh my God, when we look at where the world, I never dreamed I would see things happening this fast. And it amazes me. And then I stop and think, well, we're the city set upon the hill. If we go out there in the midst of this darkness, and I'm not just talking about fellowship, but as we walk from day to day on our jobs, or wherever we're doing, and begin to witness for Christ, I thought most people are ready to listen. A lot of mine happened in doctors. I thought the other day, I, God used me with doctors. I'd be sick. I told one doctor, I said, am I going to have to die before you hear this message? <laughs> I had to go back so many times. And every time, one day I was telling him about the Lord, and somebody was walking by the door, a patient that was they was bringing in. She said, tell him, sister, tell him. <laughs> There's so much life in God. That's what I'm finding. And I know I've just scratched the surface. Yes, yes. There yes. is so much life in Him. Oh, yes. Abundant life. He said it, not me. I'd like to know a lot more of it. <laughs> I know. I know. I'm hungry, sister. Yes, I'm as hungry yes. as when I first came into this church. Yes, Even more so. I find that word so exciting when I open it up. And that's what the world should see today. They should see the excitement in their life when we read and study, when we come to church. I'm always humming a song or hearing a song, you know, that came back from my youth. It's beautiful. I sing to the dog, and the dog even gets quiet, and he's a handful. <laughs> but there's so much life in him, and we should see that life in their church, you know. 
like you was talking, Sister Phyllis, on that Thursday night, there was not a person in here that didn't feel God moving and stirring. And I think he knew because when I looked around, most of the people work. Sometimes you're dead tired. You know, I can remember being dead tired, bless her heart. Uh, Sister Sheila, your mom would say, come on, Connie, let's go. <laughs> she would encourage me. And that's why I say this, like precious faith, we encourage one another, you know. We pick one another up. We, we cry out their names. I, I go through and I look at the seats. Now, Sister Joyce, we need to pray for her. And Sister Paul, I know you just came in. She was uh, supposed to minister today, but she got a virus and she was throwing up. And there's everything going around. So we need to pray for them today and know, know that God will touch. And you know what? That communion of the Holy Spirit, even when you are sick, it's that he said he would send us another comforter. So no matter what we're facing in our life, whether it's sickness or, or whatever, the enemy coming against you, where it's low on finances or crying out to God, it's all right because that Holy Spirit's there. And like the lady that lost her son, all is well in God. All is well in God. Everything that God does is so beautiful and so wonderful, and I'm excited about it. Are we, okay? There's some more glory that he can show me. You know, like Peter, and I was thinking of him when he went up on the Mount of Transfiguration. Can you imagine how they felt? Can you imagine? I mean, here he was that whole time he had been to them, witnessing, talking, giving them messages, but suddenly they saw him in all his glory. And his raiment became exceedingly white as snow. <laughs> wow. I mean, this Jesus that they had walked with and talked with, and he said that some of them wouldn't taste death till they saw him in all his glory, and that's what he was talking about today. And he was talking with, Mos with Elijah and Moses, was it? I don't want to say wrong, but he was talking to them about his deceased, about what he was going to accomplish at Jerusalem. I, I, I can see me speechless, you know. But he was there all the time. And why it was only these three that were allowed to see it. I think in our Christian walk sometimes, and I've seen it with me and maybe with others, we're not ready for it. These were ready to see something that the others weren't ready to accept yet. And I believe that if we walk, and like the sister said, I want to know more, I want to see more, you know? If we have that desire in our heart and ask the Lord, give us revelation, you know? Show us, reveal yourself. To, and he's wanting to reveal himself, you know? Yes. He said, upon this rock I'll build my church. He told Peter, hey, Peter, who do you think I am? He said, Thou art Christ, the Son of the living God. And flesh and blood didn't reveal this to you, but my Father, which is in heaven. I wonder how many times that Peter went back. You know how you go back in your memory? And I think the older you get with me, it's been more going back in my memory and seeing and looking at what God did. He's got us in the palm of his hand. I mean, how many times he kept me in the palm of his hand when... I could have been dead. How many times I missed an accident or, or saw something or something happened. He's got a hold of us. We just don't know how much we are in the palm of his hand. And what he's wanting for us is to be back in that image and that likeness that man had in the garden, not blaming other people. We could sit today and blame and blame and blame. That's no good. I pray for God to open the eyes of those that are blinded. Some people have no idea what's happening, and we do know. We know all signs are pointing towards home, and we know it's no time for us to give up. It's time for us to occupy till he comes and let God. I said, I think I was talking to the brother, brother Frank on uh, Thursday night, and he said, and I said, we're going to see the miracles. We're going to see... And then sometimes I tell the Lord, we're already seeing it, God, because you're doing the most important work. You're touching the heart. You're changing us from glory 
to glory, to glory by your mighty spirit, where the spirit of the Lord is. He comes to live in this heart. And he changes us. And I know when I'm communing with him in the mornings and he's talking with me, it's like time just stops. I'm reaching that eternal place in him that God has for us. And nothing can block it, you know? Only we ourselves, if we stop, if we give up. I thought of when I was looking at this, how Peter was urging him to go on. When my brother and sister-in-law, they were away in the army and they were away in Germany and they came back and oh, they were on fire for God. Had just gotten saved, rejoicing in the Lord and talking about God. And suddenly I had somebody I could talk about God to. And it was just so exciting. And everything they spoke of and thought about was God. And a few years later, I called them. Well, we're not in church now. You know, they don't sing the good songs anymore. And it grieved me in my spirit. It grieved me that the fire that they had when they came from Germany. I know Sister Sylvia's got this old song she sings, and I love it. The fire's never gone out. Though Satan many times has made me doubt, it's never, ever. And there's no reason for it to go out. As long as we have that word and we can open it up every day and to be able to read it and let that spirit stir in our innermost being. Out of your belly, he said, and that's where it comes from sometimes, you feel like, will flow rivers of living water. Anybody that thirst, let him come unto me. It's all in Jesus, amen. Yes, it is. Woo, I could shout on that one. Could I get a shout in right here? Yes, yes. <laughs> God is just so, so good. But we'll get back. Okay, I'm going on to the second verse. <laughs> He says, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. Mm, knowledge again. Which book are you in? Excuse me. Oh, I'm sorry. I should. It's uh, 2 Peter starting at the first verse. 2 Peter. Okay. So here we got grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. I like multiplication tables, you know. I was telling the kids, the great-grandkids the other day, we were talking about that, and I said, I learned those things on little flashcards when I was going, five times four is 20, six times six is 36, 24, I got, might have got that one, six times six is 36, right? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you don't forget it. It's multiplication. God wants to multiply in their life. He wants to be that one that gives us peace. In those situations that we don't understand. Have you got peace today? When you look at the world being turned upside down and, and everything else, have you got peace? We should have. Because he's the prince of peace, amen? And he don't want to just give it to you. He wants to multiply it to you, amen? Yes. Amen. I think amen. so, yes. Yeah. It's not just add. It's multiplied to you. I'm just so happy. Is that all right? <laughs> uh, I remembered um, this joy that I have. The world didn't give it to me. This joy that I have. The world didn't give it to me. And the world can't take it away. That was one of, uh, yes, his songs. And I can remember us down in shouting, and now he's singing it in glory. I don't know how much we're going to see before we go home, but I'm telling you, the devil can't take that away. He can't take that peace away unless we allow him. And we're supposed to stand against the walls of the devil, amen? And we can stand against him with this word. Jesus withstood him on that when he was tempted every time with, you know, the word. Man won't live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of Almighty God. He told me that I could have peace. It could be multiplied to me. Whose word am I going to believe? The enemy that's trying to steal it? Or are we going to believe God? 
I love this word. They can't, he said you can't take away from it and you can't add to it in the book of Revelations or he'll add to the plagues that you're going to receive. And we got so many today, so many today that's trying to take away from the word. It's precious, it's holy, it's beautiful, and it will create in us. It will make us new creations. It'll make us to where we don't have to hold our head down. Hold our heads up proud. Be that light he's calling us to be in this darkness. Amen? Go out with a cell on your heart. When somebody asks you about the hope, you've got hope in you. Not only in this world, Paul said, if it was just in this world, we'd be of all men most miserable. But we've got hope in a world to come where he's going to reign and everything is going to be righteousness. But maybe now he wants to let us see what we could be made of in him and only in him. Can we stand can we be the light? Can we be a city set upon a hill? I want to be. I want people to take notice of me, and I always like to hang around and be in the back. <laughs> when God called me the front, I don't want it, Lord. <laughs> I like sitting back here in my little seat and being quiet. Well, you can see how quiet I am today. The Holy Ghost will do a work in your heart and your life that you'll dance, you'll shout, and you'll love. Yeah. You get grieved in your spirit when you see what the enemy's done to hearts and lives today and the children and the adults and the families and how he's torn them apart. You want to tell them about the one that can change it all. Amen? He makes all things new and he starts that work down here. And I just wonder, you know, he gives us a part to play in his plan. You know where we'd be if God did everything for us? I like when he called Moses. And he told Moses, you know, that he was grieved. The children of Israel were in bondage and they were taskmasters were being so evil. And he said, I'm going to deliver them. Okay, I'm all for that. God, you deliver them. And then he says, Moses, I'm going to send you. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, amen. <laughs> we like the part about God's going to deliver. But then when God says, I'm going to send you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's a different story. <laughs> but he gives, us a, he gives us a part in this great plan of salvation, and that's what Peter's talking about. We can have peace in the midst of the storm, you know? Yes. Peace. Peace. You know how many people out there in the world are trying to fill their lives with things, and they've got everything but peace? They'll go to a psychiatrist and pay. I was about to that point before the Lord saved me. I would have told anybody my whole life story just to get some peace in my life because I know now and I look and see where the enemy was trying to destroy me and God was drawing me to save me. I was a mess. I thought, well, I'll just end it all. I'll just take my life. And there was a little voice and I never heard God said, you split hell wide open. <laughs> Thank God. I think it was a sister was talking about my mama said that, you know, somebody was telling me, I'm glad that my mama warned me if I do this or that, because God wants us to live and not die, you know? He wants us to be very much alive. I mean, when the disciples, some people came to him and said they would see Jesus, he said, why would you go looking for the living among the dead? That was the angels. That was the angels that went to the tomb. Then women came there and they saw the angels. And the angel said, he's not here, he's risen. Why well, seek you the living among the dead? We're very much alive today. We've got the resurrection power of Jesus Christ in our heart and our life, you know? Yes, yes, Lord. Glory to God. Praise you, Jesus. We can't die till he's ready to call us home. And then we'll be like the rest of us. Like Brother Art, the angels will come and carry us. That beautiful land. Woo! That gets exciting, but I want to be used down here. I want to be used down here. I want the Lord to use me. Open my mouth, use my legs. Dear little sister Judy, I was thinking this week, she sang that song. I won't walk without Jesus, and I won't talk without Jesus, and I won't do anything except Jesus is with me. Well, he is, you know. The Old Testament was nice because they were able to, the Spirit of God would move upon different people at different times, but we got the Spirit of the living God inside us at all times. Yes, you, you know? Do. Yes, you do. 
and we can tell them, you know, you want peace? You want grace and peace to be multiplied to you? His amazing grace, I'll tell you, nothing like it. Nothing like it. He'll hold on to us when we can't hold on to him. He's that kind of a God. Do we have any testimonies in here today? Somebody like to say what God's done for them. A situation. I can talk all the time about situations that he moved in my life. But you know, we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And I found that each time you give a toast testimony, you get stronger in God. I shook, my knees shook the first testimony I gave. <laughs> or I cried. I'd start to speak and I'd start to cry. But I had to keep giving it. I had to keep telling it. And most of the time you'll hear somebody say, they touched me by what they said. God uses the whole body of Christ today. And he wants to use us more and more. And I'm so grateful for that because he even uses me. Okay, now verse number three, it says, According as his divine power, divine, had given unto us all things. Some things, a few things. No, he said he's given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. He keeps calling no matter what. Just like he called out to Adam and Eve, he keeps calling. You know? Now, and I was listening to this on Thursday night with Pastor Mike. He was talking about God gives us a freedom of choice, and he does. He never will make us do anything. He gives us a freedom of choice, and he keeps calling. He's called us to that glory and to that godliness and to that virtue. There's nothing like it. And we may get sidetracked. We may fall down. He's there to pick us up, straighten us out, and send us right back again. If I read anything anymore, I read about Jesus, and I wish the whole world could do that. We went up to the detention center at one time, and me and two other ladies, God moved miraculously in there. Um, and the guy told us, he said, the night we went in, he said, now let me tell you, he said, you've got to know this. And he said, this is where some people leave. He said, if something happens in here and you're in here, you get locked up with them. And uh, I, the whole time he was talking, all I could see was some of the faces that we were walking down through there behind these iron bars. I thought, they need the Lord. They need the Lord. You know? God will get us to the place to where that compassion that he had for people, it won't matter the situation or the circumstance. You want to reach them. You want to tell them. And many of those girls, when we went in there, said, you know, God allowed us to come in here so we could get off the drugs, so we could get out of the situation where we were in. We even did a baptizing there. We went to the, that was neat. We were singing and praising. And they were baptized. There's nothing like it. Nothing like God moving upon a heart, stirring his spirit upon someone. It gives you, the Bible tells us, godliness with contentment is a great gain. You know, we're rich today. We're rich. We're standing in this church and we know the one that created everything. How rich can you get? Yes, yes. We're special. The devil tries to tell you you're not, but we're special in God's eyes. Took me a long time to realize that. He loves us so much. It says he's chosen the poor in this world, rich in faith, to be the heirs of salvation. Think about that for a minute. Yeah. The poor in this world, rich in faith. And if we get into it, and I don't know that we will, but that's where Peter's leading us because he had to grow in faith and knowledge of God just like we did. And lots of times it's experience in life that we go through. Seems like it'll either push you closer to God or some further away. It was like when we did the study about the seed and the word. Some would receive it one way, some would walk away. But you know, we're like Peter when he said, 
you know, some walked away from him. It's a hard saying. And Peter said, where can we go? You have the words of eternal life. To be really alive, to be really going, to be really doing, you have to have the word of Almighty God. And though they tried to burn it and do away with it, I heard a few years ago it was still the best-selling book in the whole wide world. Thank you, Rob. You're keeping me straight. He says, I've only got a few minutes, and I better be ready to sit down and be quiet. <laughs> Think about how rich you are in God today. Think about the contentment you have in your life when you go out there and the enemy's hitting you and showing you. You can't even entice me with things of the world. I'm like Brother Rob. There's nothing as far as I remember walking around a beautiful, beautiful, it was a mansion to me with my sister-in-law. And she said, how would you like to have this? And I said, I really don't. And I meant that. Set up for yourself treasures in heaven where rust don't corrupt and thieves don't break through and steal. Set up for yourself there. There's treasures in God just in his word that we haven't even got to yet. It's so beautiful, so alive, and so wonderful. And I want to get there. I want to go on. I want to go on with Jesus. I want to find out more about what living's all about. And I know it's found in him, amen? Nowhere else are you going to find it. People can do all sorts of things to fill that void that only God can fill in their life. And we need to pray every day, Lord. What are you going to show me today? Show up today, Lord. Use me today, Lord. In a testimony. God is so good. He is so good. I've learned to love him. And we'll learn to trust him. The Bible tells us not to lean on our own understanding, but in all of our ways acknowledge him and he will direct our path. Sometimes the enemy will come and he'll try to get you to think about things. It's always in the mind, but way down deep in your spirit, in your heart, will come forth that voice of God. I love that. I'm thinking, Lord, that's you speaking. That's you talking to me. That's you encouraging me and blessing me. There's nothing like it. His sheep do hear his voice. A man told me a few years ago, I think about a little sheep and they're so helpless. Most animals can run fast or they can do something to get away from an animal. But a little sheep, he's a shepherd. What can they do? They're not fast runners. And I heard a man tell me that sometimes over in um, overseas he had visited there and this man was raising sheep and said he actually had to have a man go around on the horse because some of the sheep, if they're not sheared, will get so heavy they'll turn over and they can't get up again. And he has to turn them back up. That's the way we need to be with God, depend upon him for everything. Yes. Everything. I'm learning. I'm not there yet. But I'm learning, and I want to learn more. And I want to trust him with all of my heart. All of my heart. And I think we spend a lifetime learning that, amen? It doesn't come without experience and knowing him and going with him through the trials and the temptations in life. The Bible gave me the scripture one time, tribulation worketh patience. And I thought, Lord, not in my book. <laughs> But it's a tribulation work with patience and a patience experience and experience hope. And it's a hope not to be ashamed of because then the Holy Ghost is shed abroad in their God. God's wanting to have an experience with you, fellas, and with you and you and you and you and you. Yes. Nothing like it. I want to have an experience with God. I do. You know? Whatever he wants to do with me, it's okay. I want to have an experience with God. And then I can see where he's teaching me through that tribulation to trust him a little bit more. I got, I got to close. <laughs> I don't want to hear anybody shout over that either. <laughs> okay, so Brother Rob, since you let me know it's time to close, we might continue this one day, but whatever God wants, I want. Would you close us in prayer, please? Thank you, Lord, for our previous service and teaching. Uh, 
Uh, look forward to the next hour.